Greetings and welcome to First Congregational Church for this service of morning prayer and communion on the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. We welcome you to First Church. No matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here at First Church. If you're interested in getting to know us better, check out our website at www.first-church.org. If you're interested in um, serving, in um, uh, being connected to um, services that might be of help to you, or you're interested in deepening your connection with this community of faith, please let us know. Sign on and um, on Facebook, in the chat, let us know that you're here. This morning, I'm joined by um, music minister, Kevin Jones, and Christian education director, um, Mark Williams. And Reverend Tim Ahrens continues to recover from hip surgery, uh, but he will join us for a time of this sermon uh, later in the service. People of God, let us turn our hearts towards the music and the prayer and an opportunity for communion later in this service. So please have your elements ready. Let us center our hearts and minds for this service. Let us worship God. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me. And bring, and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. O God, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. was 9-11, but there was another special day for the church. Do you know what that day was? It was September the 8th. That was Tuesday. And September the 8th, 18 years ago, this church voted to be an open and affirming church. 
Now that's a big phrase, right? What does that mean? Well, that means everyone is welcome, whether you are black, white, straight, gay, trans, poor, rich, disabled, or all sorts of other ways that people are living. You're all welcome. At this church, 18 years ago, we voted for that. So, over here at the poster is a part of us for us to remember, okay? To be the church 18 years ago, one of the things that also is a part of our open and affirming is protect the environment, care for the poor, forgive often, reject racism, and you're going to hear about that next week, fight for the powerless, share earthly and spiritual resources, meaning help people out with what stuff you may have, and embrace diversity, love God, and enjoy this life. Right now, we kind of get down about with all this stuff with COVID and having to do school differently, we're all kind of like this. But we are called to love God and enjoy life. So today, as we celebrate the 18th year of being open and affirming, I want you to remember to love God and to enjoy life. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you. Thank you for the diversity of our faith community. And thank you for those who voted and our church as we live into the open and affirming. In your son's precious name, amen. See you next week. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 14. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the, the Egyptians upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 18. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and his children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of the slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave! I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he could pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. It is good to be back this Sunday morning. I have missed you mightily, and it is great to return. I thank you for your prayers, for your cards, for your well wishes. Um, I am leaning heavily today on the pulpit and the Word of God, but leaning heavily on the pulpit as I stand before you uh, in this healing time. It's good to be back. Would you join me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of your, our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Today's text from Exodus 
opens with the people of Israel on the edge of promise. Behind lay Egypt and bondage, and ahead stood wilderness and freedom and a vast sea. As Moses leads his people to the shores of the Red Sea, the God of Israel sends an ancient wind, the text tells us, an ancient wind from the east. In the words of Levi Yitzhak Barakov, writing two centuries ago, the Ruach Kadim, or the ancient wind, through which God does not suspend the laws of nature to work miracles, is the wind of God that was given at the beginning of the creation of the world. And its purpose was set in place at that time. The Ruach Kadim. There on the edge of promise, the Ruach Kadim stirred with purpose as fear overcame a people facing a sea. Midrashic writings tell us that a faithful man fearlessly marched into the sea. His name was Nashan. Only then did Yahweh separate the water from the seabed and make a way where there was no way. It was the faith of one man who opened the sea to a miraculous future for all the people. Often that's what it takes. It takes the faith of one to save the whole of all. Faith in the Hebrew Bible is not a belief. It is not a doctrine. It is not a creed. Faith refers to trust and loyalty expressed through commitment and obedience. Such loyalty and obedience pave the path to freedom in this story. Faith is about action. It's not about thoughts. Now, we get confused with that sometimes in Christianity because we put a lot of weight in what we're thinking. But faith is action. Faith in Hebrew tradition is action. And Yahweh does for Israel, by faith, what they could not do for themselves. Yahweh, the God of mercy and justice, delivers his people from their oppression. And this deliverance comes not because Yahweh is superior or set apart or special in any way. Deliverance comes simply because, in the words of Deuteronomy 7, 8, Yahweh loved you, and he kept the oath that he swore to your ancestors. He delivered you as he promised. Through the faith of one man, through the leadership of Moses, God's special agent, the people are delivered and Pharaoh's army drowns in the sea as a wall of water envelops the chariots and the soldiers of Egypt. As we consider the devastation of Pharaoh's army, we should read on in the story of Middle Eastern legend. Legend has it that Pharaoh survived the closing of the sea the only Egyptian to survive this disastrous effect on the chariots in the sea. Because he had learned his lesson, legend continues, he was appointed as king of Nineveh. Later, this same man, it's believed, led his people through the penitential prayer and fasting that they needed to avert disaster in the face of Jonah's decree. When Pharaoh died, the story continues, he was sent to the gates of the underworld, where he would greet the tyrants of history for all time with these words, why did you not learn from my example as they came through the gates of hell? The question haunts every generation of oppressors since. Why did you not learn from my example? Beyond legend, beyond rabbinical teachings, on the day that so long ago happened that God severed the tyrannical hand of Egypt and God's people were delivered by that same hand, we carry this story forward. But as we learn from the text of Exodus, 
continuing on into the 15th chapter, Israel gets out of Egypt, and that's the easy part. That's the easiest part of all, for God to deliver Israel from Egypt. The much harder part is getting Egypt out of Israel. And this is what I mean. Israel moves out, but they don't move on. They get stuck in the wilderness. They get stuck with slavery behind them and freedom ahead. They can't make the shift. For the next 40 years, they get stuck in the wilderness, somewhere caught between slavery and freedom. Stuckness defines the next stage of their life together. They grumble, they bicker, they fight, they worship fake gods, they blame other people, they blame Moses, they blame Aaron and everybody close to them. They blame them for all their problems. They blame them for wilderness wandering. And they repeat this cycle over and over and over and over again some more. It literally takes the change of five generations to get Egypt and slavery and oppression out of the souls of God's chosen people. You know, I find it real easy to talk about other people and their struggles way back when, way back then. I like that. I like talking about the past. I can wander around their shortcomings all day long. But now it's time to meddle a little bit with all of us, right? Now it's time to take a look at ourselves, to bring it home, if you will. So I'll ask you today, how is it with your soul? How have you been doing? In the midst of this pandemic we're in, how are you moving through the days that we're facing? Have you ever found yourself in life having a problem moving on from a crisis that has happened and come upon you? Have you ever looked back in fear because of something that happened to you or a loved one some time ago and thinking it's going to just repeat itself, it's going to do it again, and then you get stuck there? Have you ever wandered in a spiritual desert where your trail gets covered over by the seemingly godless dry wind pushing you into an unrevealed future. Do you ever have trouble moving on? In the Exodus story of your life, can you identify the place and time that God loved you so much that God saved you with the Ruach Kadim, the ancient wind, a breath coming into you, a chance coming upon you in your body, your mind, your spirit, and yet you have found yourself unable to breathe and begin anew in the liberating light of God's love, in the new breath you've been given a chance to breathe. We do get stuck, don't we? We get stuck in the pity parties of our past, even while God is whispering to us with the Ruach Kadim, you are okay. You are okay. Move on. Go forward. What we miss when we leave the Exodus story in the wilderness is this. God's miracles don't end on the other side of slavery on the other side of the Red Sea. On the freedom side of the sea, God sends quails, God sends manna from heaven, God sends clouds to cover the beating down sun of the desert in the daytime. And if you've ever been in that particular desert, there are no clouds. So when God sends the clouds, that's really a God thing. And God sends a pillar of fire by night in the desperation of darkness to give them a way to see forward. I have a secret to share today. It's this. 
God will provide for us what we need in the wilderness that we go through. Whether we recognize it or not, we may not see it, but it's happening. In our desert wanderings, in our sultry stuckness, God sends us signs. God often offers us a hand to lift us out of the muck that we're in. There's the kindness of strangers. There's the comfort of friends. There's a call. There's a smile. There's a package that arrives unannounced. My favorite is that fruit basket that comes. Wow! Sometimes from an anonymous source. It's the touch of a child on our fist-formed hand that opens us again. It's the encouragement of a parent who tells us, you're going to be okay. This too shall pass. You're better than everything you've faced so far. It will be right again. It is the faithful prayer. It is the worship of community. It is the fellowship and the love of a faithful community. All of these serve as signs and wonders, even miracles in the desert and lostness of our lives. All these signs point to a miraculous living. Pay attention to the signs and the wonders as you wander. They are no less than road maps out of the wilderness and forward to promise. The times in which we are living are filled with blossoms in the desert. Unfortunately, the only pictures we have of the desert these days are the terrible burning fires in the Joshua Tree National Forest or the deserts in the mountains in California. And we lose track of the fact that clinging to the earth at the closest possible point are blossoms coming up in August. They're there. Blossoms rise from the desert floor while fires rage across the terrain. They find life in the terror of this time. We need to be like those blossoms in the midst of all the raging fires we see. Living is what we are designed and called to do. We live through the miracles and into the wilderness and all the way to promise. The Apostle Paul reminds us of this in our lesson this morning from Romans, that all of our living is done for others. It's a beautiful passage. He puts it this way. None of us live for ourselves alone, and none of us die for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord who is the Lord of the living and the dead. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be Lord of both the living and the dead. In and out of life and death struggles, we see and we encounter days that are very challenging. We find a way through all of this to make life better because we are designed for living. We're designed to heal in the midst of whatever we're up against. Through the path of miraculous living, we are blessed by a Savior who gives us a way out of the desert wandering of our lives and points the way forward. In Matthew 18, 21 to 25, Jesus tells his followers, which include us, by the way, to forgive when we are wrong. You just heard the story. The story of a slave who will not forgive even though he's been forgiven. And what comes upon him as a result of that. While the, acceptance, the, the acceptable Judaic law rate of forgiveness is three times. In other words, I have to say I forgive you three times until it's true. Peter being the good disciple that he is, says, hey, we know you, Lord. We're going to turn it up a notch. How about seven times? That should be enough. 
And Jesus says, no, 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 no. Seven times 70. More like that. And in Luke, Jesus puts it another way. How about 490 times? Seven times, 70 times. 77 times is one way. 490 times is another way. It doesn't matter. You get the point. To forgive has to be big. It has to be large, and you have to go into it in a big way. So you forgive until you can actually hear it in your own words, until you make sense out of what you're saying. You forgive until you live it. You forgive until you feel it. You forgive until you know it. You forgive until you mean it. Now, when you forgive like this, you will feel as though you have received mercy and the hand of charity rather than the sword of justice. To find our way out of the desert, the desert of our personal lives, and even the desert of COVID-19, each of us must reach out with our moral imagination to find the land of promise and possibility. If we have learned anything about this pandemic in the last six months, we have learned that our capacity for not facing the full and fatal force of this virus has exceeded our reach of moral imagination. We have to flip the script now. We must use the full capacity of our desire to live and to help others to live so that we can outlive the coronavirus. We have to employ the full capacity of our moral imagination, our feelings, and our love to win this war with an unseen opponent. Otherwise, we will die with the fires of the desert rather than bloom with the flowers of the desert. Now is the time to deploy the Jesus survival strategy. For those of us and our children and the world's children, for all who have suffered too much already, now is the time to call upon the ancient wind, the wind that was set in place by God at the creation of the universe, the Ruach Kadim. It's time to call for that spirit to blow, to blow across us and blow in us and through us and to spread to others. As the rabbi taught the son of Nashon so many years ago, it only takes one person of faith to step into the sea to make a miraculous future for all. So will you be that person? Can you be that person? Allow the ancient wind of God to blow through you, and may the Ruach Kadim show you the past to miraculous living and forgiving. By living fully and forgiving completely, your moral imagination will be revived. With such revival, we will find our way out of the desert and into the place of promise. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. That there may be purpose and fulfillment, O oh God, in all that we do. Christ, that we may show others this day the love that you have taught us. Christ, that the church throughout the world may respond to your call for peace and justice. Christ, that those who are in need be helped and comforted. Christ, we pray, O oh God, for the special needs and concerns of those within our congregation, members, family, and friends who are listed in the Depart to Serve leaflet, and whom we hold in our hearts in prayer, 
This day, we lift up to you those who are going through treatment, those who are anticipating surgeries, those who are recovering from procedures. We pray for administrators and teachers and parents and students in this new way of learning. We pray, O oh God, for our country, for those who are suffering from the effects of COVID-19, for the over 190,000 lives lost to this illness, and for all those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. We pray, O oh God, for those who are working for fair and free elections around the world and in this country. We pray, O oh God, for those who are running for office. May they have strength and stamina for this race. And, O oh God, we pray for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. And this day, we pray for Eddie Anderson and his family on the death of his mother, Alice Anderson. God, surround them with your love and care. And we lift to you in silence the prayers on our hearts. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may be strengthened by your grace for the tasks of this day. Christ, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Eternal God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we pray for your guidance in all our days, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, create in us care for each other as we walk in the path of truth and light. We pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We come to a time of offering, and at First Church, each week we designate an offering for a mission or ministry that supports and an issue of justice or mercy. We also support, with your generous contributions, the ministry of this church um, through your covenantal promise for your pledged giving. And part of that also goes to the larger church, the United Church of Christ, through our church's wider mission. Today, we, we celebrate an offering for a program within the city of Columbus and Franklin County called Celebrate One. It is a program that works with expectant mothers and mothers who have newborns to the age of one to nurture and provide education and social um, interaction with other mothers for support. It also provides opportunities for um, a healthy start for, um, for these babies, especially African-American babies in Franklin County. And so while we're getting better on the infant mortality rate in Franklin County, we still have lots of work to do. And Celebrate One is one of those initiatives through the city of Columbus. Last year, we took an offering for this Celebrate One, and we were able to purchase 21 um, pack and plays that we were able to deliver to the Celebrate One office that they were used to give to new mothers so that they can follow and help train their families to follow the ABCs of self -sleep, uh, safe sleep. The ABCs, always alone, always on your back, and, um, and the C, which I am forgetting. Um, so the ABCs of self-sleep. But um, we, we wish that you would contribute to um, this Celebrate One, and hopefully with enough money we can provide more opportunities for safe sleep and to help um, decrease infant mortality here in Columbus. Thank you.
Friends, no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, no matter what you are carrying with you this day, you are welcome at this table of grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the glory and joy of creation, for your work in reconciliation, for the promise of love eternal, for those who walk with us in our journeys. Blessed are you, O oh God. Blessed is your Son, Jesus, our host at this table. Blessed is your Spirit who settles in us and among us. And within these gifts of bread and cup, May your spirit transform them, making them sacred, filling not only our bodies, but also nurturing and filling our souls. So with gratitude and praise, we come to this table ready to be filled, ready to be sent out, ready to be your people in the world. We ask, O oh God, that you watch over this food as it nourishes us until we may feast in glory. On the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink it, remember me. So as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In preparing to depart, we as a faith community have heard the word and are called to respond and serve. There are many ways to serve our neighbors and this faith community during this time of pandemic. Watch your email, church website, and Facebook for updates concerning our faith community and how we will organize to help those in need during this time. Just a reminder, all worship will be online until further notice, no in-person worship. Please note all the virtual studies and meetings being offered this week. <clears throat> Volunteers are needed to help make lunches for the largest table at St. John's this Wednesday, September the 16th. From 9.30 to 10.30, we will make lunches for those in need. Contact Reverend Emily if you can help. First Church will be celebrating our fourth graders next Sunday on September the 20th. 
If you have a fourth grader in your home, please contact me as soon as possible. Faith Formation will be online starting this week with exciting opportunities for learning and growing in our faith. The pre-K through fifth grade Wednesday connections will take the form of a video posted on Facebook each Wednesday for families to view at their convenience. Youth connections will be held on Sunday evenings at 6.30 p.m. and our formative discussion for adults will be held throughout the week. Now, those are the, of you that are pre-K through fifth grade, I must tell you that the story is being um, told by Tootie and Rudy. And you don't want to miss Tootie and Rudy as they tell the story this coming Wednesday, okay? Also beginning September the 16th, Reverend Dr. Tim Ahrens will lead a midweek, mid-morning, and Monday evening class on the book, how to be an anti-racist. Complete details of dates and times for this study are listed in the Depart to Serve leaflet. Reverend Emily is making pastoral care, lawn or patio visits on Thursday afternoons. To sign up, contact Pat Patterson to arrange a visit. All details and time slots are listed in the Depart to Serve leaflet. If you need to be in touch, with Reverend Aarons or Reverend Corzine <clears throat> for emergency pastoral care or name a prayer request, please call 614-733-4547. <clears throat> this number is listed in the Depart to Serve leaflet. Just a reminder that your giving can be done through PayPal, EasyType, or simply writing a check and sending it in the mail. No matter how you are giving, be sure to mark, for, mark it for the mission of the week or to the regular church budget. If you have not done so, please like us on the First Church Facebook page. There will be numerous postings throughout this time for engagement activities and devotion. So please monitor your email, the church website, and the Facebook page. We invite you to the virtual coffee hour after the service today. You may find the link <clears throat> in the Depart to Serve leaflet. Just click on the link and it will take you to the coffee hour. Let us sing the closing hymn as we depart with a heart to serve. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you.